It's time for the Godly Woman's Guide with Terry Temple. Hello ladies, welcome to the Godly Woman's Guide. We're going to learn a lot today. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to be a godly influence with an unbelieving spouse. The reason I'm doing this show today is because I was asked by a few of my Godly Woman Guide view, Godly Woman viewers to do a show titled How to Be a Godly Influence with a Spouse Who is Not a Christian or Who Has Backslidden or Who Has Backslidden. I'm very proud of the Godly Women who asked me to do a show on this. I'm very proud of them and they are very wise. Very proud of them. So let's get started. Let's get started. Many years ago, many years ago, I say a little over half a decade, I was in the same position as many of you are. I was in the same position. My husband, he was not a baptized believer. He was a baptized believer, I'm sorry. He was a baptized believer as I am, but he had backslidden. He had backslidden and been unfaithful to me and to God. And I hated him for it. I hated him for it, for it. I wanted to divorce him and secretly hope that he kicked the bucket so that I could go marry a preacher or someone faithful to God. I really did, and I used to threaten my husband. I would threaten that I was going to leave him. Deep down inside, I did not want anything bad to happen to him. I just wanted him to repent. I just wanted him to repent just like you do. You just want your husband to repent. But I just remember, oh boy, it was so hard. It was such a struggle. I had a really hard time during that time when my husband had backslidden. And it was for a long time. It wasn't for a year or two. It was for many years. Many, many years. And, you know, during that time, I had committed my life to God. What had happened was I had committed my life to God. My husband hadn't. And he wasn't ready to repent, though I had repented. Though I had repented. And I just, it was just the, the pain and the, the strain of trying to hold my marriage together with someone that did not want to obey the Lord, even though he had knew better. It was really painful. It was really painful. However, I was partly to blame. I was partly to blame because he was faithful in the beginning of our marriage. When we first started going to church, he was faithful in the beginning, and I discouraged him. I discouraged him. When we heard about the Lord and about the church, we had been married about three years, a little over three years. So we both came to the knowledge of knowing God at the same time. We had our first Bible class at the same time. We went to worship together at the same time, all this stuff. But we hadn't been married that long, and I was very unhappily married. I was unhappily married, but I didn't really know it. I didn't know how to solve my marriage problems or nothing like that. I was very young, and I, and I was just very young. And so anyway, I he would go to church. He would go to church and leave me at home. And he wanted me to go. He wanted me to go. I remember one of the Christian women in the church, she would say, well, she, she would say, go with him, go with him. And I would say, my husband, he, he goes to church too much. I'm tired of it. He goes on Monday. He goes on Wednesday. He goes on Friday. He goes on Saturday. He goes on, he was going, he was so faithful. And I just, just discouraged him. But boy, did I regret it. Boy, did I regret, I regretted that big time. I regretted it. But like I said, I was a new convert, I was a new Christian, and I had no idea what being a Christian was about. I had no idea this all this Christianity thing. I had no clue what it was about. I really didn't. I just heard the gospel and I knew to do I knew to obey it because I knew it was from the Lord. I had some fear of God in me and I knew to obey it. But really that pretty much was it. I had tons of baggage from my upbringing. I had tons of baggage and I was not ready to deal with it, nor did I know how nor did I know how. So that's the situation that I was in and I would complain. I would complain to my husband that he went to church too much, that he went to church too much and you know, but today, today I'm happy to say that my husband has taken full responsibility for falling away back then. He told me, he, he confessed to me a few months ago, he confessed to me that he wished he had never stopped going to church. And boy, that just like, oh, I don't know. I just can't really explain it. I just had this huge relief. I was so proud of him. And I was so happy and elated at the same time that he really figured it out. That he really figured it out. And, you know, I was, I was partly to blame. But he really was to blame because as the head of our household, it was his responsibility to lead us. 
and it's your husband's responsibility. According to the Bible, he's supposed to be the head of that house, and he's supposed to lead his family in what is right, and, and being a part of the church and fellowshipping with the church and all those things, that's a part of his responsibility. That's a part of his responsibility, but unfortunately, a lot of us women, and it's probably in the United States, it's more women than men that attend worship service, and that's, you know, faithful Christians. So, but anyway, um, so if you're, if you are a new Christian or not, even if you're not a new Christian, don't discourage your husband as I did. It's not wise. Don't discourage your husband. If, if he wants to go to church, go, let him go. Even if you don't want to go with him, let him go. Let him go. Don't, don't be stupid like I was. I was very stupid. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, if your spouse has never given his life to God, if he has never given his life to God or to Jesus, I am sure that could be very discouraging as well. I'm sure that could be very discouraging. But with faith and God's help, all things are possible. All things are possible. God can change your situation, your situation with your husband. He could change it for the better, and he can give you the strength and the courage to endure it, no matter how long it takes, whether five years, 10 years, 15 years, or 20. It was almost 10 years for me. It's close to 10 years, and that's a long time. It's almost a decade. It's a long time to be waiting for someone to repent, especially if you're married to this person, and especially if they used to be a Christian, especially if you know that they went to church. To me, in my heart, I believe that a Christian is a person that follows Jesus. That's what I believe. So my husband was a church member, but he wasn't following Jesus. He wasn't following Jesus. However, so with God, all things are all things are possible. If God could change my husband around and bless my marriage, he could do the same for you. God is no respecter of persons, no respecter of persons. So the first step to being a godly influence with an unbelieving spouse is to pray is to pray according to James chapter 5 verses 16 the prayer of the righteous availeth much or succeeds I say this all the time I say this all the time prayer should be the first thing that we do prayer should be the first thing that we do after reading our Bible or before reading our Bible is to pray all the time because we need God's help we need God's help a lot of times we don't think about doing it till later when we're in deeper trouble but we need to pray in the beginning for, for um, wisdom and insight into things so that we could do what's right and what's best for our families. So we could do what's right and what's best for our family. So we always want God's help, right? We always want God's help. So the way to get that is to pray. And remember, God loves helping us. He really do. There is no problem too minor or too small. I pray to God all the time. I ask him to help me find what to wear, help what I'm going to do with my hair, all types of things. I'm serious. And God comes through. It, it, it's kind of amazing, but he does. He does. I mean, I'll, it's like a drop. Five. I got five minutes to figure out what to wear sometimes on this show. And God will say, here, put this together. Here, put this together. And I'm just like, wow. And it's, it's amazing, but God loves us. God loves us. And another thing that you should do when you pray, this is what you should do. You should ask God to purify your husband's heart, to give him the strength to seek and serve God wholeheartedly, and for him to bless, for him to bless your husband with an intimate relationship with him. I do this all the time for my family, for my husband as well as my son, really just for everyone, but I make sure that I pray this almost every day for myself as well, but also pray this for my husband. And you do well to do the same. I do. I ask God, I say, I say, please, I want, please make sure that Jesus, not Satan, has the victory in my husband's life. I do this all the time. And prayers work. They work. They work because God listens. God listens and God loves us. God is love and he wants the best for us. Okay, ladies? The second step to being a godly influence with the unbelieving spouse is to keep your faith up. Keep your faith up. Go with me in your Bibles to Jude. Jude verses 20. <clears throat> it's the book, the first book. It's right before uh, Revelation. It's the last book right before Revelation. It's really just one chapter. It's a really small book. Verses 20. It reads, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. According to that passage, we are to keep our faith up. We are to keep our faith up and to keep our hope lifted. 
and to keep our hope, our hope lifted and our faith up and to pray in the Holy Spirit or with a holy or pure heart. To pray with a holy or pure heart. And we can do that by staying in the Bible, daily studying our Bibles and praying. Daily studying our Bibles and praying. Three times a day I recommend to read your Bible and or a spiritual book. We all need a rule of thumb. We all need some type of guide in our lives. We really do. Jesus was the perfect example, but that's why God appointed Bible class teachers and preachers and, and other people in the church, elders and deacons, to lead and to guide us because we need it, especially in the beginning of our Christian walk. We need these things. So that's what I recommend. That's what I recommend. So don't try to go it alone. Don't try to go it alone. Let others encourage you. Let others encourage you. Keep watching my shows. Order my books and my DVDs. Don't go it alone. Make sure you remain um, keep your fellowship up with your church and attend your Bible classes and the programs of the congregation where you worship. If you don't have a close-knit family at your church, you're invited to, to um, follow me on Facebook. And I have a group titled Golly Women. It's very encouraging. It's a very encouraging group. And it's just a lot of, of women that are just encouraging. And I really like being in there. They're very godly women, and they encourage me all the time. They encourage me all the time. We encourage each other. So I encourage you to go there on Facebook. Just type in Golly Women, Golly Women in capital letters, and you'll find us. You'll see my face on there. <laughs> the third step to being a Golly influence with an unbelieving spouse is to uplift and encourage him. Uplift and encourage him. Avoid the temptation to nag. Avoid the temptation to nag. I used to nag my husband so much. I used to nag my, hus my husband so much. It's ridiculous. I'm embarrassed to say, but I would, I would, I would, I would nag him so much. I remember I also would like, um, I would turn certain TV shows on that had a message that I thought he should listen to about repenting or something. I would turn to certain TV shows. I would leave articles laying around. I would ask him to read magazine articles. I would leave little brochures. It's just, you know, it's, it's just, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It's like, I, you know, I was trying to force God on him. And you know what? It didn't work. It didn't work. God revealed to me that I was only hurting our marriage and pushing my husband away. That's what God revealed to me. And it's true. It's true. Basically, what I was doing was I was doing the opposite of exactly what I wanted. I wanted a faithful husband, but I was causing the exact opposite of what I wanted. Isn't that crazy? But that's human nature. That's what we do, unfortunately. That's what fear causes us to do. So the very thing I did not want, I caused and created by nagging my husband. I did. And we, and we do that. And us women, we're guilty of this. We're guilty of it. But the best thing that we could do is just repent of it ourselves. A few ways you can encourage your husband is to remind him of his God-given gifts and talents. Remind your husband of his God-given gifts and talents and really mean it. Really mean it. Those talents and gifts in him that you admire, remind him of them. Remind them of remind him of them. Remind him that he's strong and handsome. That he's strong and handsome. Remind him how smart and bright he is. Tell him he is a genius when it comes to his gifts. Tell him he is a genius and mean it. Find those gifts in him that you know he is a genius at. The gifts that God given us, the ones that we don't have to go to college for, that's just natural, that's genius. That's genius. For instance, my husband, he loves to play the piano. My husband could play almost any type of instrument and he's never went to school for it. And you would never know it. I mean, he could just sit at the piano and you, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. But I remind him instead of being in my own little world and thinking about my own self, I say, honey, could you play the piano? And I really, really do be wanting to hear what he's going to play. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. But a lot of times we don't think to do this. We don't think to do this. You know, we just assume that they know. And that's not good to do. That's not good to do. So make sure you uplift and encourage your husband. That's really a huge, a huge way. <clears throat> that's one of the best ways, to be honest. That's one of the best ways to get your husband to repent, to get him to repent and to be a godly influence. That's one of the best ways. Remember, kindness is more powerful than meanness. Kindness is more powerful than meanness. Nagging is not kind. It's not kind, and I was an expert at it. I was an expert at it. But I have noticed that the more I encourage my husband, the more spiritually stronger he grows, and the closer to God he grows, and the more faith he has. The more faith he has. Today he is a preacher. He is a preacher 
<coughs> excuse me, and we are we are preparing to plant a church in the city where we live. But it's because of him. It's because of God increasing increasing his faith. And by God giving me the wisdom and the courage to 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 uplift my husband. And you could do the same. You could do the same. It's really powerful when we do this. It's really powerful. The fourth step to being a godly influence with an unbelieving spouse is to trust God. Is to trust God. God revealed to me that I do not have to trust anyone but him. He revealed to me that I don't have to trust my husband. He revealed to me that I don't have to trust my husband because no matter what, no matter what, he, God, would fix the problem that my husband caused. He would fix it sooner or later. And my husband could learn and grow from the problem. But if I got in the way, my husband would not learn or grow from the problem. I would be basically stunting his growth. And this happens in our family, not just with our spouses, but even with our children. When we become, co when we become what do they call it, enablers or, or codependent or whatever those titles are, or when we just get in the way and we're afraid to let our children fail or whatever, we are stunting their growth. And that is not good. That is not good. We have to have trust in God. We have to have trust in God. But that was a huge, huge revelation to me. It's, I mean, that's like astronomical. One of the biggest revelations God revealed to me that I don't have to trust in anyone but him. And neither do you. You don't. God's going to protect us. If you're a child of God, God is going to protect you. He's going to protect you. The military is not going to protect you. A gun is not going to protect you. An alarm system is not going to protect you. Having bars in your house, those things that really provide a false sense of security. The only one that can really that we can really trust and that can really protect us is God. If thieves, if thieves want to get into your home, guess what? They're going to be able to. When I leave my house, I always ask God to protect my home. Because I know, I already know, I already know what can happen. So I just pray. I just pray and I just thank God. I say thank you God for blessing and protecting our home while we're away. Because I know. I know anything outside of trusting God is a false sense of security. It doesn't mean that we don't, that it's not wise to use certain things in life. It doesn't mean that, but God is, God is the one that we really, really should trust ultimately. And he deserves our trust. He desires and he deserves our trust. The fifth step to being a godly influence with the unbelieving spouse is to stay involved or fellowship with married Christian couples, with happily married Christian couples. Happily married. You don't want couples coming over that's bickering. They're going to leave a bad example. So hang out. Hang out with married Christian couples. Many times we're alone with our spouses too much. Many times we're alone with our spouses too much. Yet we do well to hang around more with, with faithful Christians. With faithful Christians. This is what our spouses need. They need to see other men being faithful and trusting in God. They need godly examples in men. And they're there. They're at the church. They're there. And that's why they're there. That's why we're supposed to fellowship with each other in the church. So fellowship with and or invite happily married couples over to your house for dinner. But fellowship with them. And make sure your husband is there too. Make sure your husband is there. The sixth step to being a godly influence with the unbelieving spouse is to focus on God's plan for your life and not your husband's shortcoming. Focus on God's plan for your life and not your husband's shortcomings. Focus on you and fixing yourself. When you look at the Bible, see it as a mirror. See it as a mirror. To not do so is a trap or trick from the devil. It's a trap or a trick from the devil. One of the best things that God did in my life was when I pick up the Bible, I see it as a mirror. One of the worst things we can do when we look at the Bible is to say, that's so-and-so, that's him. That's my husband. That's this person. That's the worst thing we could do. We're losing the benefit of the Bible. The Bible really is our mirror. It's our mirror for fixing ourselves up in our homes and before we go out into the world. And that's what's so beautiful about it. And that's what changed my life when I just used the Bible as a mirror, as a mirror. And I encourage you to do the same. I encourage you to do the same because I notice that whenever I, whenever I focus on my husband's shortcomings, I lose my peace. And it's hard to be a godly influence when we lose our peace. Okay? So, 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 you know, focus on God's plan for your life. Focus on God's plan for your life and not your husband. Don't, don't even think about him, what he's doing. Just focus on you and trust God and keep praying. And slowly, 
surely but slowly, you're going to see things changing. I promise you, I'm telling you, this is God's promise to us. Wherever God says in the Bible, it is so true. It is so real. But we just got to believe it. We just got to believe it. The seventh step to being a godly influence with the unbelieving spouse is to get involved with helping the less fortunate in your community and invite him to help. And invite him to help. It is so important that others see our actions. Yes, faith is what we hope for and not what we see according to Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1. But when it comes to human beings in general, we need to see our, we need to see good works. We need to see good works in others for us to have faith in people and God. We need to see it. That's why God tells us. That's why Jesus said, let your light shine. That is what he is talking about. I noticed when, when, God, had made, when God had made a huge change in my life about a decade ago. I, that's what I would go deliver food to the homeless people. And I would ask my husband to drive me there. And I have no doubt that it did not help him take my for him to take God's word seriously and to take his relationship with God seriously. I have no doubt that it was not a benefit. The eighth step to being a godly influence with an unbelieving spouse is to remain submissive or cooperative. Is to remain submissive or cooperative. I've cre I had a video I created a um Probably a few months ago, you can find it on my YouTube channel. It's titled, The Benefits of Submitting to Our Spouses. Spouses. I encourage you to watch it if you, have, if you have a problem submitting to your spouse. When our spouses are backsliding, some believe that we do not have to listen to them. Some believe we do not have to listen to them. Yet according to 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 through 2, we do. We do. I don't have time to go to that passage right now. But we do. But according to that passage... The reason we should submit to our spouses is so that we can win them to God by our godly conduct. And not being submissive is not godly. So you're going to have a hard time to not be submissive. The opposite really is to be is to be causing arguments. But to be submissive is really you're being a peacemaker in your home. And that's what we want, right? We want peaceful, loving homes. And we don't want strife in our homes. We don't want strife in our homes. I remember when God first began a greater work in my life, it was so hard for me to be submissive to my husband. It was very hard for me to be submissive to him because, because he was not faithful. Because he was not faithful, but God gave me the strength to be compliant. God gave me the strength. It was not easy. I think what happened was <clears throat> because God was working in me, I was reading my Bible every day. I mean, just really giving myself wholeheartedly to God. This is what I was doing. And um, during that time, you know, I knew God had I knew God had a plan for my life. I knew had a, God had a plan for my life, and it saved me. I knew God had a plan for my life, and and He has saved me from so much. He has saved me so much. When I looked at my past life and knew I should be dead, but I was still alive, I was so grateful and full of joy. It gave me strength to be submissive to my husband. It gave me strength. I guess that's what the passage means when it says the. Uh, the, the joy of the Lord is your strength because that's exactly is what happened to me. And it gave me the strength to stay in my marriage because when my husband took so long to repent, I wanted to leave him. I wanted to divorce him. I really did. And I had every reason to, even according to the Bible, I had every reason to, but I knew God had a plan for my life and, and I want to save my marriage. I want to save my marriage and I encourage you to do the same thing. It really will be worth it. It really will. The ninth step to being a godly influence and unbelieving the ninth step to being a godly influence with an unbelieving spouse is to be patient and long suffering. God finally changed my husband, but it was not overnight. Like I said, it took almost ten years, and it was it was hard for me. It was really hard, but but by following these steps that I have given you, I was able to hang in there. I was able to hang in there and to maintain and to keep my hope to keep my hope and my faith up and everything. And I was able to hang in there with my marriage and with my husband. So ladies, when you follow these guidelines, when you follow these guidelines, you will have a godly influence with your spouse and it may help him to repent. But above all, you will have joy and peace in your life and will have a wonderful relationship with God. And you will live a life pleasing to God and you will have a happy life and you will be greatly blessed for it on earth and in heaven. You will be greatly blessed for it. So you will have a life full of peace and joy no matter what, no matter what. And that's what we all want. And that's what God wants for us. 
Hold on a moment. I'll be right back. Would you like to please God and have your heart desires fulfilled? Of course you do. We all do. It's human nature. Therefore, I encourage you to get a copy of my newest book, The Golly Woman's Guide to Inner and Outer Beauty. This book will help you discover God's good and perfect will for your life, show you how to lose weight and keep it off the golly way, help you find a way to golly man, and give you tips to keep your marriage strong, and much more. If you are a church leader a Bible class teacher, I highly recommend you get a copy for the women in your congregation and for your ladies' Bible class. It will really save them a lot of heartache and trouble in life and help them be a better Christian and a godly woman. Did you know books make one of the best gifts to give to a person? The reason they make excellent gifts is due to the fact that books, just like the Bible, has the power to change lives. I personally give them as gifts all the time and I encourage you to do the same. The Golly Woman's Guide to Inner and Outer Beauty is available at all major bookstores. But if you make a minimum donation of $25 to my women's ministry, you will receive an autographed signed copy by me and other free gifts. You can order a copy online at thegollywomansguide.org and this book will greatly bless you and your life. Thank you so much for listening. See you later. May God our Holy Father in Heaven continue to bless you so that you may always be a blessing wherever you go. Bye-bye. Thank you ladies for joining me today. I hope you have been able to learn from this lesson a few ways to be a godly influence with an unbelieving spouse. Please give me a call if you have any questions or prayer requests. I really look forward to hearing from you. Please join me next week at the same time. Remember you can always watch my videos on my YouTube channel under Terry Temple. I also encourage you to, to subscribe to my free online magazine at thegollywomansguide.org. May God our Holy Father in Heaven continue to bless you so that you may always be a blessing wherever you go. See you later. If you are watching and enjoying this show, I encourage you to go online and to please make a donation to our ministry to not only keep this show on air, but to also support our sister ministry, Jesus Feet. Jesus Feet is a ministry I launched a few months ago to help feed and clothe orphans and to employ widows around the world. Our first project is taking place right now in Kenya in a slum area called North Rift in Eldoret. In that area, the majority of the people live way below the poverty line and some even die of starvation. However, through Jesus Feet, you can help us make a difference in their lives. We have begun to employ the women and widows there to make dresses for us. These dresses will be placed on our website and sold for tax deductible donations to keep this ministry going. The dresses are high quality and handmade, not factory made. I personally picked out the fabric and they are gorgeous and plan to wear some of them on the show. But we need your help to keep this much needed project going. So I ask you to please go online and make a donation of any amount today, whether it's a couple of dollars or more. Whatever amount you give will be greatly appreciated and put to good use. By the way, all donations come with free gifts. I want to remind you that the Word of God says that whatever we give will be returned to us pressed down and overflowing. So please help us be God's hands and Jesus' feet to a hurting world. Thank you for listening. Please go to my website at thegollywomansguide.org and click on the Jesus Feet icon. May God our Holy Father in Heaven continue to bless you. May you always be a blessing wherever you go. See you later. Ladies, we hope you enjoyed the Godly Woman's Guide TV show. Please go online to learn more about Christian author and magazine editor Terry Temple. You are also encouraged to get a copy of Terry's latest books and DVDs, which are tax deductible. Or, you may make a donation to her ministry, which is designed to uplift and empower godly women around the world. Allow Terry to help you become all that God desires you to be, so that you will be greatly blessed and have your heart's desires fulfilled. Go online today at thegodlywomansguide.org. Thank you for watching The Godly Woman's Guide with Terry Temple.